So, Terence Crawford beats the brakes out of Errol Spence and manages to stop him by the ninth round. This was honestly a domination by um, uh, Terence Crawford. It was absolutely one-sided. And I'll be honest with you, like, given the stage that he was on, given the pressure that he was under, given everything that he's been to been through in the last five years to get through to this fight, I feel like um, there was so much spite and vicious com combos coming at um, Errol Spence. I feel like Crawford was almost punishing him for everything that Crawford's like everything Crawford was basically punishing Errol Spence for everything Spence's team did in terms of creating hassle to make this fight made and he, he was literally punishing Spence for all the stuff that he said about crossing the road or come to the PBC all the times he stalled all the times he accused him of like um, being scared of him all the times he said that Crawford was the one that was pricing himself out and all of that stuff I feel like he, he literally vented all of that frustration in the past five years in this performance he literally took all of his rage everything he went through in the past five years all the people that were telling him when are you going to fight Spence he took all of that anger and he literally put it into this performance and he channeled all of that pressure all of that anger everything that he's going through he pressured it into this one performance and he created um, almost like a virtuoso performance that was incredible just from literally the start of the fight it was almost um he was establishing a jab the start of the fight was quite cagey the first round especially i think both of them had their hands up and they were very textbook especially crawford crawford really did have his hands up but before the final bell rang um crawford just seemed a lot more poised and seemed a lot more like dealing with the pressure a lot better while um uh spence seemed a lot more nervous and he looked like he was a bit jittery but he did give the f a good performance in the first round the first round I, I would actually um class that a bit of a draw because not much happened it was very cagey um but then the second round happened and that's when everything started to light up um it became a bit more close and then um i believe um um spence landed like a right hand and um crawford done a i think it was like a 2-1 combo and crawford's punch got there a bit quicker and it made uh, spence drop on the floor and when that happened literally the whole the whole crowd went crazy and i think it shocked um uh, spence spence never saw it coming it literally shook him up and he was like what just happened how am i on the seat of my pants so early in the fight and then when he got up he just did not seem like himself for the rest of the fight he seemed jittery but i will give credit to spence uh, spence as he does do doll out a lot of punishment when it comes to his opponents generally like he does bash them up but he can take one as well like he he took an absolute shellacking in this fight so when he did get up in the second round um he just seemed like he, his legs were gone but then the third round um after that brief scare he put it on um crawford straight away he tried going inside and doing body shots but it just wasn't enough um Crawford's uh, defense is incredible in terms of his head movement and his guard, but his ability to actually cover up against body shots and his inside fighting ability is incredible too. That's one aspect of this game that's really underrated. And um, eventually, like um, he started establishing a rhythm, and he, I think he dropped uh, Spence again when Spence managed to catch a punch on him. He dropped him again, and um, he dropped him three, four times on route in this fight, and he completely dominated. And then towards the end, um, I felt like one of the, the uh, whether it's the referee or like uh, Spence's uh, cornerman one of them had to throw the towel in because it was getting too brutal and eventually the referee came in and waved it off at the ninth round I think was perfect I mean he didn't wave it off like too early to the point where like a, such a super fight of this magnitude you don't want to wave it off too early you want to give like the both uh, combatants a chance to get back into the fight if they were if they were um behind because it's such a big fight but you don't want it to go on so so far where like the fighter has irreparable damage that they can't recover from and i think i think the ninth round was they could have stopped it one or two rounds earlier nobody would have complained but give it a ninth round i think gives the benefit of the doubt it gives them enough time to actually um say yeah th there's no way this guy's coming back from this and to put it into perspective below before the fight i did actually say that i thought that um uh, crawford was the bigger puncher in the fight and in my opinion i think this fight proves that i mean spence is seen as a pretty hard puncher hard hitter but he he's not a puncher he's someone who grinds you down with um sustained pressure and then eventually breaks you down and you capitulate under his pressure and eventually fall but with 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 uh crawford crawford's a genuine puncher this guy in his last 11 fights have 11 title fights have all been knockouts 
he he's a special generational talent that I think is going to come once in a lifetime if that I mean he's accomplished something today that's incredible and in my opinion he's number one pound for pound um it, it was absolutely incredible what he's actually done today so yeah that's just my opinion tell me your opinion obviously my prediction for the fight was um a Crawford uh, win via split decision but I did not expect him to completely dominate the way he actually did he dominated this fight and he completely he almost made it look easy I mean um spence could did not have anything to do like in terms of like he, he just did not have a second plan b or plan c or anything his only response he couldn't outbox him obviously because not only is crawford a um a great puncher he's an incredible uh, master boxer as well so he couldn't outbox him so his only game plan was to keep going ahead and keep trying to land body shots and break this guy down but it just wasn't enough and there was a part in the fight where i kind of started feeling sorry for spence i was like this guy is just getting absolutely destroyed here it, it was an absolute decimation i did not expect it to be this one-sided it almost reminds me of when uh, roy jones fought james tony um but before the fight like everyone was saying like this is going to be a close fight james tony's um obviously he was coming off a win against uh the likes of michael mccullum i think he beat um uh, michael nunn as well and uh, obviously roy jones was the upstart talent who who i think beat bernard hopkins or there was a few fights and he won the ibf title and he, he looked great but then when he game, came up against james tony they, they were split down the middle they was like who's going to win this fight is it going to be roy jones is it going to be james tony both of them were undefeated but then roy jones just absolutely gave a masterclass performance and decimated him and almost made it look easy he embarrassed him and this is what this reminds me of like literally before the fight people were split down the middle and a lot of people said spence was going to win there was a sizable contingent that said crawford was going to win but there was a um uh, a violent m major minority which was sizable that said spence was going to win but after this um literally the decimation was just so incredible the destruction was so incredible that it looked so one-sided that it, it was just almost embarrassing like it was embarrassing how one-sided it was similar to when roy jones uh, completely outclassed james tony so th this is just my opinion tell me what you think um about this fight i think this could be like um the performance of of a lifetime for crawford i don't know how he's gonna over um up this one the only thing i could think of is if he goes up to 154 and beats charlo for all of the belts and then he becomes undisputed in three weight classes which would be incredible he's already done it in two weight classes if he does it in three that'll just be something else but yeah this is just my opinion tell me your opinion what do you think about this do you think what i'm saying is true do you think what i'm saying is a lie do you think do you think i've overlooked the point tell me what you think below and uh like and subscribe to the channel i've got a lot more content coming your way peace